Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I've got something a little bit different. As you can see, I'm not outside, I am at work after hours, and I have a new frame. So I decided to build up a bit of a winter project slash hardtail thing. Uh, so I went for a Kotick Beefy Max. Uh, it is a steel and crimoly hardtail 29er. Uh, and it was originally going to be a part spin special, but things have escalated and it no longer is. I've got all the components here next to me. Uh, I've got a mixture of Shimano, Tram with the Rock Shops, Crank Brothers and various other parts that I have left over. I'm going to make a start on getting the frame prepared and ready to go. And we'll crack on with it. bits in place. Um, I did a busy frame the off frame beforehand, um, did that off camera uh, because it's the first one I've done and there was maybe a tantrum or two and it's not great. But we are going to move on to headset next, uh, get that in. I've just gone for some basic M part ones, nothing too fancy, replaceable bearings, uh, nice and cheap as well. So let's go through that. Right, so one thing to bear in mind when you're doing a headset is go slow and do one at a time. So otherwise you end up putting in one key, overlizing your frame and it's bad news for everyone. Something else you're gonna need to do, make sure you grease everything. If it's metal on metal or metal rubs against metal, need some lubrication. You don't wanna go in dry, nor does the bike. So you'll take your bearing tool, pop it into the frame and take your cups then the locking piece, slide that on, beautiful, there you go, once it's in, give it a torque so it doesn't come out, and that's the first one done. Awesome, now we've done that, it's probably one of the, the worst parts, we're going to go ahead, put the bottom bracket in, uh, then we're going to start mounting the drive trains, so uh, cranks, the radio, uh, things like that, and then we'll move on to the wheels. Drivetrain's on, bottom bracket, chain set, read radio. So now I'm going to start on the wheels. And we'll get these set up tubeless, get the disc rotors on, uh, get the rear one in the bike so we can see what it's starting to look like. And then we'll move onto the fork. Here we go. Now for some air. Let's get a pop. As you saw, wheels are now done, so we are going to get the fun stuff and we're going to put the forks in. So I've gone for a set of Rock Shops Pike Selects. I do have a set of the Ultimates on the way, but they keep getting delayed until March because of COVID and shipping delays. So we're going to put these on, I'm going to measure up the steel tube that I need and then we'll cut that and have them properly fitted. So I've got the forks in the frame, what I'm going to do is just score the steer tube where I want to take material off and then I'm going to take everything back out and what I'm going to do is cut about two to three mil below that line so when I load everything up and get all the compression on I don't end up cutting too short and then have to take more off and it's a bit of a fat, that way I get a nice load of preload and compression on it all and it should sit lovely. Right, let's get sawing. Steer tubes are cut and I've just cleaned off all the burrs. So we're now going to grease everything up, get it in the frame, bearings and everything, get some compression on it and we'll be good to go from there. So I've taken the liberty of putting the handlebars on, I've started running the rear gear cable uh, using some dip ties, but I've got to do some trickery with linking it all in there. 
So I'm gonna go and put the left hand brake on and the drop post uh, before I do the right hand brake lever and the gear lever. And I wanna make this look neat and clean and not like a spider web sort of mess. So I'm gonna crack on with that, I'll time lapse it so you can see vaguely what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, let's do it. Right, so I got a bit carried away. Brakes are on, uh, gear cable is rooted, it's not indexed or anything yet. Um, brakes feel really good against the uh, pad spaces, so I'm probably not gonna bleed them. I'm probably regretting that when I get out on the trails, but anyway, I think it's time that we make this actually look like a bike. And I'm gonna put the wheels in, and we'll see what it looks like as a rolling chassis. Let's do it. We'll start with the rear wheel. We've got our axle, three sub the axle. Spacing and then it'll be the drop post. Right, it's time we're getting there. Chains on, indexing's all done. Lovely and silent. Right, saddle, it's just a basic one. It works well with my bum, but here is the seat post. It's Crack Brothers Highline 3. 200 mil of drop, so it's actually more than my uh, stump jump has got. So should be getting pretty rowdy <laughs> uh, with this. So we're gonna work out how high I need it uh, and get it installed and go from there. Cool. A few moments later. It's done, there we go. It is finished, I've got the dropper post in, put the mud guard on, uh, gears all sorted. I'm probably gonna bleed the rear brake because just playing with it as you do, it is a little bit softer, so I'm gonna get that done, but most importantly, how much does it weigh? Because that is what everyone wants to know with a steel hardtail that is made out of cast iron. And it comes in at a not insignificant 15 and... We'll call it 15 kilos because it's wobbling. Uh, in old money, it is 33 pounds, which I think it's pretty respectable actually, so I'm pretty happy with it. That is everything from me. I'm going to leave the break, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like these, let me know in the comments and I'll try and do some more weird and wonderful things in a workshop. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next one on this bike. Cheers for watching.